morning, everybody. Today, I've got just a little bit of milling to do, and then I get to hit the firewood pile hard, hard, hard. Um, just about this close to pulling the trigger on a new processor, one that'll double my production. I've got that in the works, and also I'm thinking about adding another dump trailer. Two dump trailers, one that'll haul one cord, the one I have now, and a trailer that'll haul two cords. My truck will have no problem hauling it, but I spend almost as much time on the road delivering firewood as I do making firewood. So if I can cut my processing time in half and my delivery time in half, that to me means that I will essentially double my production. Not that I'm trying to be a big production firewood operation, but I like to spend equal amounts of time milling because it's fun as I do making firewood. So I just took a couple of days off. We went to Kejimakujik National Park and uh, ended up camping, took our camper van up. We put probably 100 kilometers on our bicycles, just riding around the park. It's a beautiful place. And the park is empty this time of year because school is still in. So it's a zoo after another couple of weeks when school gets out and, um, and the kids are wonderful. They love it there, but it's busy for us. We find it really busy. We like to take our grandkids up when they get a little bit older, but it's a beautiful place to hang out. It's a beautiful place to relax. And I didn't realize how much I needed just the downtime, not to think about uh, milling and firewood and business plans and all the rest of that. I just got to sit and think and drink coffee in the morning and, and read and, and maybe even sleep in a little bit. So it was kind of nice. I really enjoyed it a lot. So I'm back. My batteries are charged up and I'm ready to work. So let's get this log opened up. This is a 16 foot log. It's 11 and a half inches at the small end. What I need out of this is only one piece of four by six, but I'll get, you know, two by six and some boards probably out of it. I already milled one of his logs yesterday. He brought me two logs. This is the guy that supplies me logs. He's doing a, making a pergola and he brought me some of his own logs to mill so that uh, he can get that project done. So I'll get these opened up and stacked somewhere where he can come pick them up with his truck. He's got a one ton dump truck and uh, he brought me some firewood yesterday. He's got, uh, got a, a, quite a big acreage not far from here. And when I need some specific logs, he goes and cuts and brings them. And I buy a couple of cords of hardwood every week or two from him just to uh, give him some spending money. So anyway, let's open this up, get a four by six, see what kind of a yield we can get out of this 16 foot log. The log is 16 foot two. And on this sawmill today, I'm putting, I'm running a, a wood miser blade, one of their double hard uh, 10 degree blades. It's a good all round universal blade. It would be similar to anybody that cuts with a Ripper 37. This would be about the same blade. In my opinion, they're about the same price, uh, sharpen them about the same amount of times. And they're, I would call them a disposable blade. They're cheap enough that if you hit a piece of metal or a rock or something like that, it's not the end of the world. And if you got a good, decent log, the yield is, uh, out of the log is worth sacrificing a blade if need be. So, all right, enough talking, let's get milling. A few things have to happen before we start to mill. Of course, the first is, I have to tension my blade. So I take the tension off the blade at night when I leave. The only reason I do that is it just takes a strain off the bearings inside the uh, inside the band wheels or on the, on the outside of the band wheels, I guess. And I turn this, this is a hydraulic tensioner in here is just some motor oil. When I push this ram in, it squeezes oil out of hose in the back and fills a little hydraulic cylinder right here and pushes this yoke out. And it, that's what tensions the blade. This blade I run at between 2,700 and 3,000 pounds per square inch. It seems to be the best. Anything more than that, it, uh, I've been known to break a blade now and again. So if I run too much tension, so. And then as this blade heats up, it'll expand and I have to keep an eye on it. And once it, oh, a couple of passes through a few logs, I don't have to think about it again. It's not, a, not an issue. Check the oil, obviously. Every time I turn the key, on this machine, the oil is perfect anyway. It never uses any oil. I change the oil every, oh, usually every 100 hours or so, and I'm just about due again. Um, this mill has got 425.5 hours, so that engine's hardly broken in. And I have that same engine, as you know, on my processor. And the next thing I have to do is I have to pump up my lube tank. So this lube tank is just a, as you can tell, it's just a, uh, a garden sprayer. And I press, press wash, or press wash, pressurize sorry, this tank and 
I run all this, this is windshield washer, diluted with water this time of year. And I have a filter that catches the sawdust that inevitably falls in there when I open it up and fill that. And I have a switch on the back of the motor, right, let's see if I can show you, right there. This switch right here, when this throttle, this cable pulls right here, this cable right here will pull, that will engage that switch, and that will allow my lube to drip. You can see it there starting to pour now. And that's how my lube works. Just a simple, I can control how much I'm getting through this valve. Just goes through a simple hose. And that way when I shut the mill off, the lube start stops flowing. And I use just a simple 12 volt valve, solenoid valve right here. And this is a parts washer hose. It's just to get a simple nozzle on, buy them on Amazon. I've got a little tiny canvas belt sweeper on this side of the blade, and that catches some of the big chunks from going through and, I don't know, either clog my uh, sawdust evacuation chute or run through a bearing or break a blade or who knows what. I don't think it's ever been a problem. This mill is all adjustable. This is adjustable up and down, back and forth, and I can tip it this way as the same exact thing on this side. So this is adjustable. I put an adjustable arm here. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yep. So just loosen this bolt up and I can move this up and down. And on this end, I can move it up and down this way, in and out this way, or this way. And that allows me to set the toe on the, on the blade. You know what, so far, so far since I've built this mill uh, a few years ago, built it uh, before COVID, I believe, it hasn't been out of adjustment once, not once. I haven't had, knock on wood, haven't had to adjust these bands once. It took me a little bit to get it so that I get those blades run where I want them to run on the wheels. You want the equal distance behind the, the band wheel as you have in front of the band wheel. And I have the wheel set up so I can interchange one and a half inch blades or one and a quarter inch wide blades without, it doing, without changing anything else. Just put the blade on and run it. And I've never had to adjust it. I've never had to adjust the height. It's always level this way.
step one in opening that log up is to have a look at the pith. And the pith is the actual center of that log, that little bit where the growth rings start to, uh, to grow from. And you want to make sure that that's centered. If you want to capture that into one piece of wood if possible. If your blade crosses that, you'll end up with warping issues uh, later on in your lumber. And your lumber just, you may as well just chip it and shred it because it won't be really good for anything else. So I, I have a look, make sure that I'm within a half an inch is fine. I'm making a four by six uh, beam out of that. So it's not going to be, uh, it's not like a board or a piece of siding or making shingles or something out of it. Cut that first top off. So this here, I had to cut this off at nine and three quarter inches from the bottom of the bunk. That means that the, the bottom of my cutting teeth are nine and three quarters of an inch off of the off of the bunk. So that square cut is the nine and three quarters of an inch above the bunks. Then I flip that log 180 degrees. Typically I come down about a, oh, an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters and clean that up. That would make just about perfect sense. An inch and three quarters will give me to an eight inch can. Step after we get both sides squared up, we're eight and eighth of an inch apart. So that means that the is from this point to this point is eight and an eight and one eighth inches. When I would drop that down to four inches, I'll cut that exactly out of four inches. I'll have two equal equal parts at four inches. Because the blade will remove that other eighth of an inch that we have there. Next step is to stand this up on 90 degrees. We'll use that flat side we just made and I'll put that against the the backstops and the backstops are exactly 90 degrees to the bunks and that allows me to make sure I get a perfect per perpendicular cut to the uh, to the flat side we just made. So hopefully you can hear me over the blower and the fan that's blowing here in the background. So we got a nice clean cut. There's a little bit of wane right here on the end and I'm not too concerned about that at all. You have to be prepared to change your mind every time you, you push that saw forward. As soon as I hit the forward button on that saw at first I was going to do a nine and three quarter inch cut, but it would be a lot of waste. I can get a two by six out of this, about say eight or 10 feet long, and then I can still get my four by six out of it. So instead of a nine and three quarters of an inch, I went up to 11 and three quarters of an inch and made my first cut, and that was my slab cut. So now we're going to flip this upside down and uh, see what makes sense where we'll cut it off at.
So at this point, what I'm thinking about is I want to get, make sure I get most out of this 2x6. I don't worry about this right now. That's going to make its own wind up. So I'm going to flip this upside down. And I'm going to cut this off at 6 inches. So I'll be able to get all this weighing on the bottom, or a lot of it. And I'll get a 10-foot 2x6 out of this. And the rest of this will be scrap. I'll just leave it on the board, and, and the customer can cut that off later. He can use whatever he wants out of it. And then I'll have a 6-inch this way by 8 and 1 8. So I'll be able to get two pieces of the uh, 4 by 6 over this. So we'll set our height at six inches exactly. And we'll make another cut. And we'll take a one inch piece off of this and a one inch board off the top of that can. That'll work out nice. six inches. We've got a board here that still needs to be edged. You can see there's a, some weighing on both sides of it. So I'll get a one by six out of this. This is, uh, I'm going to turn this up on its edge. So eight and an eight. I can take this down to four inches exactly in the middle and that'll give me one of the four by sixes that I need and then the other one I'll make a couple of two by sixes. And that'll work really just, just lovely. So I pick the best side that I can and uh, it looks like this side here, I want to put down, I'll cut this off at four inches, and that'll give me two four by sixes. The length that I can mill is 16 foot 7 inches long in this current configuration. I could easily add more track to either end of this that if I thought I needed to mill long, but what happens then is you need a bigger tractor to haul the logs. If this log was uh, say 20 feet long, it would be hard pressed for my little tractor to carry it. Plus, the hole that I put in, I'll show you here, this gap behind me between these, this post and that post over there is 17 feet. So I kind of limited myself on purpose to a 16 foot long can. I don't need to mill anything longer than that. I've never been asked to mill anything longer than that. If somebody's building a beam that's, that's say 30 feet long, we'll laminate some two by eights together or two by tens or something like that. Maybe laminate a bunch of 16 foots or 12 foots together and make sense. So when you take lumber out of a log, you always got to think the next step. What am I going to do with the board that came off? Do I need to edge it? And then you're thinking in your mind, what's going to make uh, the most sense for the least amount of cuts through that log. So this isn't going to be any big savings in, uh, in time milling. I'm going to get the bottom. I want to take the bottom piece of this, put it in his pile for his 4x6 for his pergola. And then I'm going to stand that board back up, take two one-inch cuts off it by themselves. So that board's the only thing that's going to be cut. And it goes really fast. You'll see how fast the, the mill can cut through that one-inch board. And then the remaining 
uh, four by six. I'm just gonna split it in half and give him a pair of two by sixes over that. And that'll be a start. He needs uh, 10, no, he needs 12 pieces of two by six. Uh, I better look at my chart. I don't remember if it's 10 pieces or 12 pieces. It's either 10 pieces of 12 feet or 12 pieces of 10 feet. So I better check, check my list. But anyway, so you always have to be thinking the next step in milling, in anything really, but especially in milling. How is, how is this cut? going to be uh, affecting the next cut or what would be the best way to get the most efficient use out of this this sawmill well the most efficient way would be not filming it and just mill it and i'd be on my fourth log by now but i'm trying to do this for the sake of education i get people asking about where do i start knowing how to mill well i'm trying to give you the basics here and uh it's a, it's a basic lesson. I've been milling a long time. I grew up in a sawmill, and I'm, I know for sure 100% there's way easier, better, faster, smoother, more efficient ways to mill. Lots of people have different ways to mill, and I'm not saying my way is right or wrong. This way works for me. No, I don't get complaints with the lumber, and uh, and I make a living with this. This isn't this isn't a hobby. Um, it's a hobby that turned into a living, but I, I quit a job, a good job. I had a career. I, I'm an automotive mechanic, well-trained, uh, master tech in several different brands over the years and uh, I had a business a shop of my own had seven employees good six-figure salary at the end of the year and I gave it all up to start smelling sawdust and I don't look back for a minute I don't make the money I used to make that's for sure but I certainly am uh, less stressed at the end of the day and um, it's just a di totally different mindset, totally different thought process than managing people. So I, I don't manage people anymore. I have no employees. Every now and again, I can I can hire a friend to come give me a hand if I've got a big sawmill order or a bunch of firewood that's just got to get out. Um, but for all intents and purposes, this is uh, I'm a happier man doing just something that I enjoy doing. My wife can give me a hand every now and again, and uh, I don't look back. I'm okay. I'm okay with it all. So. I know last week it might have been a the video I, I produced might have been a little gloomy, but don't don't despair. I'm, I'm in good shape.
Three, unplug that fan so you can hear what I have to say. Not that what I'm gonna say is anything profound. So I got two two by six is 16 feet long. I got one one by six 16 feet long and two four by sixes. This has been a pretty good yield on that log. Not two four by sixes, one four by six. Let's put the other one in. Nice looking piece of timber, isn't it? Shouldn't be lifting it, but I am. And just like that, we're done. So I'm going to put the backstops up for the next log. I'm milling a 12 foot log next, so I can use the two odor most backstops. If I was milling eight foot, I'd use this backstop, but that doesn't need to come up at all. So that gives somebody that maybe hasn't milled before an idea what you can get out of a log, how to get it out of a log. There's a whole lot more to know. I didn't use the tow boards. I was pretty happy with the where the pith was centered in that log. It was kind of a weird oval shaped log anyway. The more cylindrical and straight the log, the better the yield. Um, the smaller, the bigger the taper, the more work you have to get to get a little bit of lumber out of them. This was a nice log. The customer's gonna get exactly what he asked for. There's no magic in money and pricing. When I buy logs delivered to the yard, I pay 47 cents a board foot. So I have a scale and I've, I've done a video before on scaling, but I can, I can do another one sometime if somebody wants that uh, information. But I scale the logs and I pay 47 cents a board foot. It's pretty easy. I try to make a buck 10 a board foot when I sell the lumber. So when I mill out the lumber, I'll sell it for a dollar 10 a board foot. So I subtract 47 from a dollar 10, three cents a board foot is what I charge for the lumber if somebody brings their own logs. So plus I, I usually charge for a blade. Um, the first blade's free if I have to change the blade because the logs are dirty or there's a piece of metal. I once uh, milled just not long ago a log that was used for target practice. It was loaded with lead and lead doesn't really hurt the blade so much. I mean, sure it tells them for sure, but it, it doesn't wreck them like a nail or a spike or a, an ax head, for instance. Um, I've even heard uh, somebody that found a pistol, somebody hit a pistol in a tree and the tree grew around it and they cut into the pistol and that made for a bad day on the sawmill. Really hard on the blade that day, so. Anyway, I'm wrapping this sawmill video up here. I've got uh, a couple more, I need seven more two by uh, six, 12 feet long. I just looked at the list, I got three over there now that he can use and I'll make seven more and that order will be complete. And then I'm gonna go make some uh, firewood today. I'd like to do a couple of cords and deliver it today, so. Anyway, thanks for coming along for the ride. This has uh, been a great a great morning so far. It's early in the morning. It's not even nine o'clock. And uh, if it wasn't for milling, it wasn't for the filming of the milling, I'd, I'd have been long since on the, uh, on the firewood processor. But I enjoy showing you guys what I do too. So thanks for coming along for the ride. Log Father out.